Hello, I'm Jonathan Milam here with a video and I'm going to discuss how to travel with a trumpet. And um, I am on the road usually about half the time out of a year, 365 days. I'm probably on the road close to 180 days. So I do travel a lot. I've done this for several years and um, I have never had a mishap with the setup that I'm going to prescribe at this point. This is a great trumpet and it is not a trumpet that I would travel with. For travel purposes, for practice, there is only one option, and that is a pocket trumpet. And the reason is I travel with a 19-inch suitcase, and the trumpet is probably about 17 inches long. It's not going to work for me. Uh, the pocket trumpet is the, again, the only option that I'm seriously considering. And uh, it's what I've used. I've traveled over a good bit of the United States. I've been to Japan twice, Korea twice. I've been to Germany at least 12 times a year, Romania, Bulgaria, um, Bahrain, Kuwait City. So I've traveled uh, far and I have never got a dent on my trumpet. This is a Carol Brass pocket trumpet and uh, for a long time I used Trent Austin's, one of his um, brands which was extremely well and uh, in fact very 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 similar to the Carol Brass. Both of them have a five inch bell which I consider to be uh, essential. Uh, I don't want anything less than that and both of them are um, really uh, professional horns although they are pocket trumpets. Okay now what I'm going to do I'm going to put the uh, video down and I'm going to show you exactly how I pack my trumpet for best results. I do not put it in a case. Uh, I don't have room for that. I don't want an additional case with me. I'm going to put this in a the middle of my suitcase and I'll show you exactly how I've done it for the last uh, two and a half years without a dent. All right, if you'll pardon me, we'll lose the um, eye contact, but uh, I'll focus on the suitcase and show you how I'm putting things together. Immediately before I do, if I'm traveling a lot, and I am traveling a lot, airport fare is both expensive and largely unhealthy. What I do when I'm traveling is I'm going to carry uh, several things. One is I'm going to carry some tins of pink salmon and uh, also of tuna. I'm going to carry openable containers of sardines. Fish is much better for you than the fare that you'll buy in the airports. And uh, this probably will cost you $1.48 as opposed to a hamburger, which I'll easily pay 16 bucks for. And recently at Chicago's O'Hare, I wanted a hot dog, but I was not going to pay $9.58 for one standard hot dog. So uh, this is much better for you. At night, a lot of times if I need a snack, I've got Orville Redenbacher's kettle corn, high fiber, and uh, this is what I'll do rather than going out and spending 15 or $20 for um, a poorly baked pizza in a hotel. And uh, I've spent upwards of $30 many times in New York for a pizza. That's as cheap as you can go if you're going to tip the delivery person. That's just not really the way to go. But with your tuna, and also it's very, very easy to take that along. In here I've got napkins and forks, plastic uh, cutlery, and oh, one thing I didn't mean to mention, almonds are very good for you, while peanuts are not necessarily so good, almonds are great, and they don't take up a lot of room. Okay, I'm going to focus again, I'm going to put the camera on the suitcase and show you just exactly how I pack my horn. Okay, I've already pre-packed much of my suitcase, but what I've got here is my tennis shoes. When I'm through with this, of course, I'm going to close it and I'm going to set it upright in this direction. This is going to be the bottom of the suitcase, and for that reason, I want to show you how I do it. I'm going to put my pocket trumpet essentially so that it rests against the shoes 
The bell has got plenty of space here for the bell to sit. If you look at this horn, you've got a lot more room this way. I'm going to want this part covered. Again, my clothing stops about an inch shy of my shoes. That'll keep my bell packed there. But a couple of other things. Um, firstly, I lube my horns very well. I've got a lot of lube around. This is actually the third slide and uh, I lube it pretty heavily. And uh, then I also, of course, use lots of valve oil on my horns. I don't want any oil coming out and getting on my clothes. And I don't want this uh, lube um, heavy uh, slide grease. I don't want that getting on my clothes. So what I'm going to do is take a, this is actually a Lawler case. You could use a thin nylon one, and I do have one, but I prefer this. I'm going to... I'll also show you I'm not traveling without a stand. This stand works very well. It's a Hercules stand. It's going to sit like this when um, I'm practicing my horn. But it's going to collapse into a very small piece that will actually strengthen or support, at least, my bell. So again, my trusty Hercules stand is going to go like this. I'm going to count on this to give support in my bell and um, then I'm going to put it in my horn bag and I'm going to fold it over one time. All right, there we go. Actually, I'm going to fold it like this. Now, not going to get any grease or slide oil inadvertently on any of my clothes. And once I've got it set like this, I'm going to take my clothing and uh, just make sure that I've got a little more padding between the soft sole of my tennis shoe. And then I'm going to, of course here I've got the best mute that I've ever found for practice mute which is a Wallace practice mute. The intonation on this thing is perfect. If I do an octave leap, an octave and a fourth, an octave and a fifth, this is the only mute I've found personally that does not flatten the high notes and sharpen, uh, make sharp the low notes. So I'm going to just leave it piled on some socks over here. And then I'm going to take a few more items. My bell is right here, the crease of the bell. I'm going to make sure that it's well padded. I'm going to take, lastly, a shirt here. And then I'm going to take, whoops, wait a minute. Oh, oh no. Those are my wife's. I'm not going to take them. <laughs> Just a little humor. Um, but I'm going to take this material and I'm going to put a final cover across the top. Eventually, this will take my dirty clothes. It's just a very thin nylon bag, which I got from American Airlines. I'm going to zip the suitcase closed, and I am ready to travel. I've hit a number of countries, probably at least 20 foreign countries, and far more within the United States, and I have never incurred a dent in my horn. That's the best that I can do. And if I were trying to put a trumpet in here, you can see the obvious problem. It's the length that's going to make it really uh, overly problematic. That's my great, great concern. This is a system that's worked extremely well for me for several years, and uh, I will continue to use it. My mouthpiece is here in a very well padded bag and I've also got a little Warburton piece which I can use lip exercises if I want and uh, occasionally I've carried just my mouthpiece and done just buzzing that is better than nothing probably but I believe the benefit of buzzing with a mouthpiece depends on the type of amateur that you have whether it's any benefit or uh, much benefit. But this system has worked extremely well for me, I'm thankful to say. Thanks for tuning in once again. It's always a pleasure 
sharing uh, Trumpet info. Open to your comments and hope to hear from you as well.